Pete. All right. Thank you, Larry. Um, I'm going to uh, talk today uh, specifically about uh, the concern around uh, environmental losses of phosphorus from tile drains uh, that are installed in fields that uh, receive manure. I want to start by thanking the Livestock and Poultry Environmental Learning Center for putting on yet a, another very timely and, and useful uh, webinar. And uh, I also want to point out that the following speaker, Tim Harrigan, is going to expand on the manure management theme. I have a very narrow focus, which is talking about this environmental concern of phosphorus. And Tim will give you a broader perspective on factors uh, affecting uh, tile drainage and, and manure management. So um, just a few take-home points at the beginning of my presentation, and I also have some at the end of my presentation. Um, and first is just that, you know, we're talking about phosphorus here as a liability as opposed to a resource in uh, ag production. And uh, it's definitely something that farmers and, and resource managers often feel um, uh, doesn't play uh, to our, our normal nutrient management principles. Uh, in fact, there's an aspect of the uh, disproportionate impact. Um, and this comes from the fact that very small losses of phosphorus can result in a large downstream environmental impact, and so losses that are agronomically insignificant can be environmentally significant. And to keep that in perspective, think that about the fact that uh, when we're managing our soils uh, for good fertility, we're trying to keep parts per million of phosphorus in the soil solution. And off-site, uh, if you look in a stream or in uh, a lake, um, parts per billion or a thousand-fold less than parts per million can cause an algal bloom, can cause an environmental problem. And so uh, just little losses can be a concern, and this means um, that trying to keep phosphorus on fields uh, and out of our waterways can, can be a real headache. Um, so today I'm going to focus on tiles and phosphorus and just start off with kind of a concept that uh, tile drainage creates a hydrologic connection. It not only just routes water away, but it also routes other things, including phosphorus. Uh, and it can route things like liquid manures as well. Um, and that this is especially problematic in soils with good structures. And I'll go into this a little more later on. And then I'm going to conclude uh, with basically some insight into um, manure management and how you could adapt the 4R nutrient stewardship strategy to that. It's not a one-to-one -one adaptation. You definitely have to think a little differently about nutrient management, but does involve addressing issues of rate, timing, placement, and form. And today I'm going to emphasize the rate, timing, and placement of the 4R strategy. So let's start first with uh, our perspective, uh, watershed perspective on uh, managing phosphorus and the good news is uh, from quite a bit of research that's come from around the world, we find that in uh, our watersheds generally, the majority of the phosphorus that creates an environmental concern is coming from a minority of the area, and we call those critical source areas. Um, these are hot spots, basically, and oftentimes you'll hear the 80-20 rule, that 80% of the phosphorus loss from a watershed comes from 20% of the land area, and that land area is hydrologically connected. And so we have an idea in management of the critical source area, that we have phosphorus sources out there. They can be soils or they can be uh, the amendments, uh, things like fertilizer and manure, uh, and they exist out on our fields. But in order for them to become an environmental problem, we need to have some type of a transport mechanism. And it's where we have a phosphorus source and a transport mechanism that uh, we want to target our, our management efforts. That's where we get the most bang for our buck. Um, phosphorus not only uh, is kind of constrained in space, it also moves in pulses. Um, and so here's some excellent data coming out of Ohio, or the, the Western Lake Erie region of Ohio, in which Kevin King from USDA ARS monitored uh, tile drain, and you see basically uh, this hydrograph here, you can see some peaks 
and tile flow that occur at various times. And when you overlay the concentrations of dissolved phosphorus on there, you see a correspondence between the, the storm flow, these peaks in flow from the tile line and the peaks in concentration in phosphorus. And so phosphorus isn't moving all the time, like you might expect from something like nitrate, where when the water flows, a, uh, con a nitrate X is kind of a conservative uh, tracer or element. Uh, phosphorus moves in these pulses. So think hot spots, hot moments when we're talking about managing phosphorus. And our, our strategy basically is to try to separate the phosphorus source from the transport mechanism. That's our basic approach to trying to minimize off-site losses of phosphorus. What happens, and this surprises people, I think, quite often, is that as we drain our landscapes to move water out so that we can have productive soils, we actually do create conduits and opportunities for phosphorus to move uh, with drainage water. And so the concept here, then, is one of tile drainage is serving as a source of hydrologic connectivity. On the right there, I, I show that. So consider a kind of a typical flat Midwestern landscape that's intensively uh, drained. Uh, here you can see some areas of internal drainage. These are depressional zones that are in the field, and you can see that from the difference of color. And then here you see a, uh, a drainage ditch, so some type of an open ditch. And uh, if you were to, uh, to drain this with uh, tile lines, um, you consider that as essentially connecting these internally drained areas with the drainage ditch, okay? So this is that hydrologic connectivity, and that's the concept that I hope to, to convey uh, over to you, that by uh, intensifying our drainage systems, we also increase hydrologic connectivity. And so oftentimes you think of tiles as something that sit down uh, below the surface of the soil um, and as being disconnected from the soil. But in fact, when we monitor phosphorus losses from tiles, we find a tremendous amount of similarity between what comes out in the tile and what we see in surface runoff or overland flow. Um, and this has very much to do with macropores. And here you have a photograph uh, of uh, work by um, Marty Shipitello and Frank Gibbs in which they blew smoke uh, into tiles and basically observed where that smoke emerged at the soil surface above the tiles. And what you see then is a connectivity between the tile itself and the surface as represented by the smoke. And you also see that it's spatially discrete. This is not something that's happening all over the field. This is happening in immediate proximity to the tile line itself. And when repeated, we see this generally within one to two meters. That's where we get this macropore connection. So the kinds of macropores that might route uh, the phosphorus and other things down to the tiles that provide that connectivity could be structural macropores. So that could be uh, the formation of cracks in a shrink swell soil. Um, and they can also be uh, biopores or biological macropores. From here, we have an earthworm burrow, uh, or it could be from a root channel. Now, uh, returning to uh, some of Kevin King's excellent work, um, here uh, is a, uh, a, a graph that shows the relationship between soil test phosphorus at the surface of the soil, so in the upper couple inches, and the concentrations of dissolved phosphorus that he observed in tile drains from multiple fields. So every point that you see here represents an average over uh, several years of observation um, with these larger lines being the error associated with that or the deviation. In it. And what you see is a, is a trend that we see when we look at surface runoff. And that is the more phosphorus that is, exists in the surface of the soil there the higher the concentrations of phosphorus in drainage, in tile drainage. And this is not from a, uh, any type of an experimental outcome or study. This is actually from observation of farmers' fields. And I think that's very, very compelling. So to start with then, when we're in manure management uh, mode, we know oftentimes we, we uh, 
inadvertently build up soil test phosphorus because of the uh, ratios of nitrogen to phosphorus and the fact that we, we end up oftentimes putting much more phosphorus on than what we harvest with crops. And so I think the first principle to take home here is that uh, we really want to be pursuing the land grant recommendations uh, for soil phosphorus. Um, I've converted soil test P from the last slide to Melix free phosphorus. That was the type of soil test phosphorus. And 50 parts per million Melix free is roughly the threshold at which you no longer see an improvement in crop yield associated with more phosphorus in the soil. And so, um, you know, optimum management just from a soils perspective uh, will bring you down to fairly low concentrations of dissolved phosphorus in drainage water. So I'm going to adapt the 4R nutrient stewardship strategy. This is something that uh, a number of groups have been uh, promoting. Um, it's a little different than our typical application for uh, optimum crop management uh, because we're focused now on off-site losses of phosphorus, uh, but involves some of the same concepts. So first, we'll talk about placement of manure. And really, the, with the placement, what we're trying to do is promote the binding of phosphorus by soil by putting that manure in contact with soil. And we're really trying to avoid areas where we might have macropore connections to tile lines. Uh, then the um, timing of the uh, application of the manure, and there the critical concern is the timing relative to when drainage occurs. Um, and then the rate, and the rate one is that kind of a, is a simple, uh, you know, uh, rule of thumb that less phosphorus loss uh, or less phosphorus added to soils means less phosphorus loss, uh, the potential for less phosphorus loss from the manure. And then finally, a point that I'll make here, but I really won't talk much about, is that uh, we've all seen uh, or heard of kind of catastrophic cases in which uh, the application of a liquid manure has resulted in discharge, direct discharge from a tile. And uh, so the form uh, of the manure uh, being applied is uh, also uh, an important factor. So I'm going to stick to data because that's what I do. Uh, and uh, I also want to kind of convince you that what we're talking about is not new. The, uh, the environmental losses of phosphorus through tile drains have been observed uh, for many decades now. Uh, and uh, just because we have sensational cases, such as what's happening in Lake Erie, um, doesn't mean that these are new issues. It's just uh, that they're new to, to the public and to some of us who have not uh, considered them before. These are data from Stu Klausner, who was formerly at Cornell University in the 70s, where he did some experiments over some tile lines where he applied bedded pack at different rates. It was broadcast uh, in a box spreader similar to the one that I have pictured uh, up above. And what you see here is on the x-axis, I have the number of days after the manure was applied. And on the y-axis, I have the concentration of dissolved phosphorus that he observed in tile drainage. And I have an idealized, really, a relationship here. His data were a little more noisy, but they show this general trend where the highest concentrations come in association with the drainage that's happening in close temporal proximity, so soon after the manure is applied, and that that declines over time. And this is something that we see with surface runoff as well as with tile drain, that our highest concentrations that are a function of manure management or manure application come in the closest, uh, the events that are closest to our uh, application of the manure. And he also applied the manure at a different rate, uh, at a higher rate, and saw basically that the concentrations were elevated by that higher rate. And so here you have rate and timing uh, really as key factors in affecting uh, the concentrations of phosphorus loss in the tile drain. So going from rate and timing to placement, uh, I mentioned already the fact uh, that um, you have connectivity between the surface and the tile line in the form of macropores that are continuous right there. And so in as much as precision placement is possible, um, this seems to be a, a, a promising strategy 
but maybe not a realistic strategy at this point. I think most folks uh, either do not have uh, a, a good sense of exactly where their drains are, are laid out or do not have uh, the technology um, to curtail the application of manure above their tile drains. But there is an opportunity here, and this has been discussed quite a bit, to try to avoid manure application directly above the tiles. And here's an outcome of, uh, of that. Here's some liquid hog manure coming out of a tile line. All right. Um, one area that uh, has some, some controversy in the, in the conservation world uh, is uh, with trying to improve placement of the manures through tillage. Um, here's, some, here's a study that we did in which uh, first we monitored the leaching of phosphorus before we put any manure on the ground, and you can see the, the background leaching losses were relatively low. Then we either broadcast this liquid manure as liquid dairy manure, or we broadcast and we tilled it in. And by tilling it in, what we did was we distributed the manure in the, basically the plow horizon. We put that manure in contact with the soil, and we even plugged up some of those macropores. And our results show pretty clearly that you had a reduction in phosphorus loss in association with that type of a practice. And so that's one option, but uh, it's definitely something um, like I said, that uh, is not uh, universally accepted due to concerns over tillage um, and erosion losses. And yes, we do see sediment loss through drain, tile drains. Uh, and I want to point out that usually after tillage, the, the losses are, are punctuated or they're short in time. Here's um, a study that Andrew Sharpley conducted um, in which he basically looked at surface runoff and the effects of either tilling or not tilling soils that were very high in phosphorus. And the line that I'm showing here, this blue line right here, is the soil that was untilled. Um, and when he went in and tilled it uh, at this point, you can see that he had an initial spike in phosphorus, and that was pr primarily in particulate phosphorus from the erosion uh, that he, was, he witnessed. But that over time, because of the tillage of the mixing of the soil, uh, and reduction in phosphorus concentrations in the soil, he saw a decline. And so in looking across the literature, I would say right now that there's not a lot of evidence that periodic tillage to prevent off-site losses of phosphorus results in greater losses. In fact, they result in lesser losses when you look at the literature. There's very little evidence uh, to the contrary. Um, something... Um, that is emerging is uh, wonderful innovation in the manure management world. Um, here's an example of some prototype sweeps that we've tested and that Jeff Strock and others are testing um, that were developed by DSI Ag in which essentially they try to create some turbulent flow underground to, to promote the mixing of a slurry or liquid manure with the soil and to improve plugging. And our preliminary data suggested that um, they were beneficial, but I think we have to wait uh, to see uh, trials elsewhere uh, to see how that plays out. But we'll certainly we're, we're going to see a lot more innovation in this arena. So my last slide basically is just to give you uh, a few take-home messages. Um, first, I wanted to just lay out some myths. Um, and the myths uh, include uh, that the phosphorus doesn't move through tile lines. That's simply not true, and that's something that uh, was, has been dispelled for a long time, but oftentimes takes some local monitoring to convince people uh, that it actually happens. The, uh, another myth is that phosphorus loss in tile drain is only dissolve, in dissolved form, and I think anybody who's looked at turbid flow or coffee-colored flow out of a tile line can tell you um, that uh, that's uh, simply not true. And then also that phosphorus loss in tile drain uh, drainage can't be managed, and I, I tried to show you today some of the principles that are associated with developing management strategies. So the, in regards to manure management over tiles, um, for the placement of manure, you want to try to promote close contact of the manure with the soil to minimize phosphorus loss and drainage. If you can avoid applying near a drain, then you can avoid bypass losses. 
Um, and I will lay out that there is a role for tillage, um, but this is certainly something that at a local level needs to be dealt with because there, there are trade-offs uh, there. Um, from the standpoint of timing, uh, you want to avoid periods before storms or when soils are wet and can't store liquid manures or if they're very dry and cracked and you expect flows down to the, to the drains. Uh, from the standpoint of rate, uh, really, if environmental losses are concerned, keeping your rates as low as possible uh, is at a premium. And uh, that you will see some differences uh, in how you manage uh, phosphorus losses based upon whether or not you're dealing with uh, a liquid manure or dry manure. And there are amendments that I didn't discuss that help, can help to reduce the solubility of phosphorus in manure and also prevent it from running off-site. 